I appreciate the, the remarks uh, of my colleague, Senator Blunt, uh, the effort that he has made to really focus in on, on how we can ensure that there are appropriate levels of testing as we respond to this, this uh, COVID pandemic. Um, we recognize it's these technologies, it's the, the treatments, it's the vaccines that will get us there. In the meantime, there are many men and women across the country that are doing extraordinary work. Uh, responding uh, on the health side, uh, as well as responding as we deal with the, with the economic impact, the economic fallout uh, due to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lots of challenges, incredible challenges uh, all over the country. Challenges to, to the health sector, to our economy, and really to our everyday life. I think it's probably fair to say that the last six months have just been emotionally exhausting for, for people. Um, we, we've heard this before, we're all ready for, for COVID-19 to be over, but the virus is not ready to be over with us. We are adjusting to, to a new normal, um, uh, and as we, as we deal with this, I think it is important to acknowledge the individuals, really the heroes in so many of our communities who have, have saved lives and really provided a, a level of, of care and compassion throughout it all. Like all states in the nation, uh, Alaska has been severely impacted by this pandemic. Uh, last week was a pretty, pretty rough week for us. Uh, we were included among the states with the fastest growing numbers uh, of, of, in terms of the rate of transmission. Fortunately, that seems to be uh, tapering uh, a little bit right now, but only with very uh, aggressive measures. Uh, in my uh, hometown uh, of Anchorage, our mayor has, has resumed the hunker down mode for us in terms of restaurants and bars being closed to, to indoor, uh, indoor uh, dining or or um, uh, a recognition that um, many of the advances that we had been able to, to move forward on are now being ratcheted back. Um, additional travel restrictions. Um, it, is, it is for us a time of year when um, our communities all over the state would be welcoming droves of, of tourists all coming to enjoy the best of Alaska but uh, this year, our, our season is, is all but eliminated, almost non-existent, and certainly when it comes to, to recognizing the volume of tourists that the cruise industry provides to Alaska, those are all but canceled. Uh, the flights that people would make to the state have made, been made more difficult by, by mandatory quarantine for our travelers. Um, it's not just impacted the tourist sector, it's impacted the oil industry, the service industry, our fisheries. But, uh, but as I, I, I mentioned, as, as difficult as these economic times are, uh, the most important thing that we all need to be focused on is the health and safety of our people. And I have tremendous appreciation and gratitude for all the healthcare workers and the individuals who work to protect Alaskans on a daily basis. In Alaska, we are extremely fortunate uh, to, to have our COVID-19 uh, health response led by Dr. Ann Zink. She is our state's chief medical officer, and uh, she, along with her team at the Division of Public Health, have been doing a great job under Gov Governor Dunleavy's leadership to implement and communicate clear public health guidelines from the beginning of this unpredictable event. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Zink, I think if you, if, you, if you have an opportunity to meet her, she just projects calm. She projects confidence. Uh, she projects assurance. And she has absolutely earned the trust of Alaskans throughout this difficult time. And she's done so not only because of her demeanor, but really um, how she leads. She leads by example in modeling the behavior that she's encouraging all Alaskans to follow. Um, she has, she's probably taken social, social distancing and teleworking uh, to a new level. 
uh, as she teleworks from a yurt outside of her family home in, in Palmer. Um, she uh, was able to, to take a, a small group of Alaskans um, to some villages, more remote villages in this state with Dr. Eastman from Health and Social Services when he came to Alaska. But it was at a time when most of these communities were very, very reticent, as many still are, to, to allow in anyone from the outside for fear of, of transmitting the, the virus. Um, but she not only led this, this trip uh, very safely, but then when she returned to her home, she led the example of, of self-quarantine for 14 days to ensure that, uh, that anything that she might have been exposed to was not going to be shared with those that she loved. Her priority has been and continues to be flattening that curve, slowing the spread. Um, we, we know that in our state, we're just a little more isolated, we're more separate, more, we're more remote but we know that we are not immune from, from any disease of this type, and that, we, that is surely evidenced by our history. In, the, in 1918, when the Spanish flu, uh, the last global pandemic, hit our state, uh, more people died per capita in Alaska than almost anywhere else in the world. Uh, in, in many of, of our uh, small uh, native villages, uh, you had 70%, 80% of, of the population that was wiped out literally in a few day period. It's hard not to think about that when we face this current pandemic. And in fact, Alaska was one of the very first states in the country to put together a coordinated response to the challenges presented by COVID. This was back in January. January 28th, there was a chartered plane carrying US consulate personnel and citizens um, uh, from an area of China that had been at the center of the outbreak. And that plane landed in Anchorage. The passengers had to, to debark the plane in order to refuel. They were moving to, to California. But we had a situation where it was a pretty quick scramble. And Dr. Zink uh, led her team. They were able to mobilize really quickly and very efficiently to ensure a safe operation that was successful in ensuring the protection and the health and safety of all that were involved. They opened up a terminal there at Ted Stevens International Airport. They created a, a quarantine unit that delivered not one, but two health screenings to over 200 passengers and crew members. Um, it, was a pretty, it was a pretty extraordinary event that they were able to, to put together in very, very short orders. Um, they said that Dr. Zink's comments on, on this effort really reflect her strong leadership, those who were part of that. Dr. Zink noted that, she says, it's easy to stay focused on all that we had to do in a short period of time to prepare and respond. But at the end of the day, this mission was about people. It was about American citizens, some of whom were working to serve our country. It was about families, and it was about helping each other at a time of need. So Dr. Zink has been doing extraordinary work as we have dealt with challenging issues as they relate to, to quarantine after travel, travel restrictions around the states uh, that have been extraordinarily limiting. She has, she has worked with her team to put together plans of operation and protocols so that our fisheries can, can be successfully prosecuted, and they have been. A, a, a mark of success in terms of being able to identify and then isolate and keep the, the, the virus from transmitting. She is also now very, very, very focused on how we safely return our kids back to school. I had a long conversation with her a few days back, and she says this is the ultimate challenge, for it's not just how do we reopen schools, how do we keep our schools open? after that. That's our challenge. And she, she, shared, she shared with me, I thought, she says, she says I thought that, that uh, putting together the plans and the protocols for the seafood processors is going to be challenging and dif difficult in these very remote communities where they have limited health care uh, in the event that you have the virus spread. She said that was difficult, but she said getting 
our schools open and keeping them open safely. This is the biggest challenge. And she said schools are now her new seafood processor. So she is taking up, up the challenge aggressively. But Dr. Zink reminds us that at the end of the, end of the day, what we do, what we have to stay focused on is keeping, keeping people safe, keeping our families, keeping our workers safe. This is a moment about all of us and, uh, and how we respond during this great time of need. I am extraordinarily thankful for Dr. Zink's leadership, uh, both out in front and behind the scenes as she works with the many extraordinary Alaskans that are seeking to make a difference as we, as we take on the daily challenges and battles that face us with, with the COVID-19 response. With that, uh, Mr. President, I yield the floor.